County was recently found to be the seventh most obese and overweight area in all of the entire country. And when this happened, many people came together to figure out what needed to be done to help combat this really bad situation. From this, Building a Healthier Polk was formed. And with us today to talk a little bit about Building a Healthier Polk and what they're specifically doing to help our community become healthier are Dr. Joy Jackson, the Medical Director for the Florida Department of Health in Polk County, and Sarah Roberts, the Executive Director for Polk Vision. Ladies, thank you so much for coming out today. Thanks for having us. So tell uh, people out here in the television audience a little bit about what Building a Healthier Polk is. Well, Building Healthier Polk is a community uh, group that was pulled together by Polk Vision and the Department of Health to address a community-wide health issue about three years ago. And at that point in time, they galvanized uh, different people from the physicians, healthcare community, planners, wellness professionals, teachers, to really talk about how obese the community is and how do we combat that? How do we come together and work toward a common goal? I know that a three-year plan was originally part of what was going on as far as when everyone got together. What was uh, the outcome of that plan? The game plan uh, outcome is to lower our obesity rates to be below the Florida average. So right now, Polk County's average is 37.5%, and we'd like to lower it about 10 points to 27.2%, so it's below Florida's average. Uh, that's really how we pulled everyone together to work on the BMI and just making better healthy choices in general, whether it's walking a little bit further or eating better foods. Um, it's really a conversation from all different facets of the community to lower those rates but become more healthy. Definitely. Well, it's, I mean, to be completely honest, a healthy community uh, translates into so much more for everyone in general, especially if you look at people being able to stay at work, so you have more people being able to be productive, you have better uh, uh, lifestyles and everything that goes along with that, so it's definitely important what you are doing. Well, and the group decided to have five strategy areas to really focus on that. So there's a school-based strategy, a workplace strategy group, as well as a physician-led strategy group to look at how doctors can talk to patients about their healthy weight, and also the community at large working together and post-secondary, which is all of our colleges and universities working with students to be well and to make good, healthy choices. Definitely. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about the physician-based strategy. Strategy three is the physician-based work group, and this is a multidisciplinary group. And basically what we wanted to find out from primary care physicians in the community is are they measuring BMIs on patients? And by the way, a BMI is a body mass index. For those that don't know what that means, that's a calculated measure that takes into account a person's weight and their height. And a, a healthy BMI for an adult is between 18 and a half and 24.9. A value of 25 to 30 is overweight and greater than 30 is obese. So we wanted to know from our primary care physicians uh, if they were measuring BMIs and if so, if someone was found to be out of range in an unhealthy uh, range, if they were discussing this with their patients and making recommendations. When were these surveys conducted? We conducted a survey uh, using a tool called SurveyMonkey in 2013. And we sent email survey requests to around 350 primary care physicians in Polk County. And we deemed primary care for the purpose of this survey to be internal medicine, family practice, general practice, gynecology, and pediatrics. So of the 350 physicians that got surveyed, we got responses from 100. Uh, and basically the point of the survey was to find out, again, are you measuring a BMI? And the number two, are, are you counseling or informing or educating your patients? And what did you find from the survey? We found of those that responded, about 96% were measuring BMIs. Uh, and part of that is because any provider office that has an electronic health record, it is very easy because the computer calculates it, but we still needed a baseline number. So basically, if they responded, the vast, vast majority were measuring BMIs, and 86% were counseling, educating, or referring their patients. Oh, that's great. See, these numbers were high, but there still is a quandary. And, and as a physician myself, we cannot blame physicians for the obesity issue, but they're part of the solution. And we needed more information. 
So we decided to go back to primary care providers and we ex expanded to include ARMPs now, which are also doing a lot of primary care in Polk County, to see what they thought the obstacles are for themselves and patients in the community, uh, residents as far as obesity. So we came back to something, uh, basically a, a second type of survey, but it was done in person. So we either interviewed individually or did small focus groups of 28 um, other providers to get their opinions uh, on what the obstacles are. What did you find some of the obstacles to be? Well, it, it was extremely interesting, uh, and, and the, the work group had a, a, a really sort of an interesting time compiling the information. We had a lot of phrases, and we tried to bucket them into what the issues or concerns are. So we found that, that providers have issues within their office. They have perceived thoughts of what patients have as concerns. From within their office, really lack of time, uh, to have these discussions, the desire not to offend patients. A lot of people don't like to hear that they're too heavy, and that was an obstacle because you really don't want to tick off your clientele, although it's for the best of that patient. So these, you know, there were some significant issues and, and actually a lack of resource guides within their offices. A lot of times physicians may not do counseling themselves, but they will refer to a nutritionist or their nurse or somebody to sit with that patient. Um, what they felt were obstacles for patients were lack of time, uh, devotion to healthy eating and exercise. Uh, and then they also felt there were some community needs. So we tried to turn these findings around as to a wish list, wish list for what providers need, patients need, and the community needs uh, to try to help fight uh, the issue of, of obesity. Great. Now, what is the next step then? The next step, we have created an executive summary. We have uh, distributed this to our providers that were involved. It is available on our website. Uh, we're getting the message out through other entities. Um, again, to share uh, recommendations of physicians, we feel that we can actually be a voice for those that, that, that participate in this opinion survey. Uh, and really what the physicians felt they need is um, resources to be used within their office, a list of reliable, safe, and effective weight loss measures uh, that we can refer patients to. Um, there are things that communities need that, that Sarah can address mm -hmm. uh, in addition. Yeah, really we found that um, people having access to affordable healthy foods is really important. Being able to access, you know, fruits and vegetables versus uh, maybe more quick foods and fast food type options. So healthy food access, access to safe places to exercise and walk, um, and maybe a safe route to school for kids to walk to school or bike to school, and really f having a healthy option of, um, of traveling and uh, multimodal transportation options. Physicians providing ongoing medical care and really discussing with their patients, you know, some ideas that they can make those really sim simple health care choices and healthy um, adaptations to their lifestyle. And nutritional education, one of the reasons we have so many strategy areas is we feel like if you have a family um, and your child is hearing about healthy habits at school and you're hearing about healthy habits at work and the community is talking about having parks and recreation and sidewalks available for you to have healthy recreational activities, that that approach, that multidisciplinary approach that Dr. Jackson just said is really important to the whole community because you're hearing it from different levels and you're reading it and you're seeing it. So people are really cognitive um, of realizing what's going on in the community um, and that they have healthy options and they can make a simple a simple little change in their lifestyle can really add up to a healthy lifestyle. I know that's kind of uh, the catchphrase that you all have is uh, what was it uh, a small I have a healthy habit today will mm -hmm. equal a better lifestyle tomorrow. Exactly. So I think that's really a smart way to go about it. Mm -hmm. Now uh, what are some of the opportunities that were found to help individuals? Well, one of the things we think is having the dialogue and convening people to talk about this issue is really important because there is a negative impact of obesity. Um, it affects your heart health, it affects diabetes, and we felt like the community who came together three years ago to discuss this health topic um, really saw that it was impactful in so many different areas. So if you can address that one area, it could really help people become more healthy in a lot of different ways. Um, 
We also found to help individuals, you know, devote time to meal planning and really giving them again access to fresh food and, and healthy food choices around the community. And that parents can really be role models for their children with regard to this. If parents are cooking at home and the kids can help cook, um, if parents are exercising and devoted to taking care of themselves, that the, the children will mirror that and they'll do it as well. And, and we really want to stress the, the importance of individ, individual accountability for your own behavior because we can, we can lead um, residents of Polk County to opportunities. Their physicians can speak to them, but it really is a personal choice many times uh, to, to lead a healthy lifestyle. So that, that again, cannot be understated. Um, you know, um, to, to make the decision that you're going to, you know, to, to access healthier foods and to routinely exercise is really very important. Mm -hmm. Doesn't get much easier than that, really, if you yeah. think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Easier said than done. Well, but it's unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> but it that is, is the truth. Yeah. Uh, now, what is the most important thing that you want the community to know about the strategy three in building a healthier Polk? I, I think that we need the community on a global area to realize that this is a community issue. Mm -hmm. This is something that's not going to be a quick fix. We have all gotten heavier gradually over the past 10 to 15 years. Uh, and that this is a long-term change in the way we live and that we need to make this as part of our day. Absolutely. I think just to echo Dr. Jackson that it's not a quick fix. It's taken us a while to become uh, heavier over the years and it's not, we're not going to take a magic pill and wake up slim the next day and um, fit as a fiddle. So really understanding that it's going to take a lot of changes over time and it's going to continue to take a dialogue of people coming together and saying this is an important issue and how can we provide resources to help our residents um, make better healthier choices over time. Well ladies thank you so much for coming out today and telling us a little bit about building a healthier Polk and how you're working with physicians to make Polk County a much healthier place. Thank you. Thanks. Building a healthier Polk is working to bring down the obesity rates in Polk County and make uh, the community a much healthier place to live. If you'd like to find out more about this wonderful group and the things that they are accomplishing, go to their website at http colon forward slash forward slash polkvision.com forward slash building a healthier polk forward slash.